Well, it's been a minute since the last game review, and I need to get back into the game with something, so I chose a 90s platformer tribute to the likes of Crash Bandicoot, Super Mario 64, and Sonic the Hedgehog. The game is called Lunastance, which was developed by German developer Dennis Decky 64 Kroner, also known as a Grumpy Fox on the internet, and published by Deck 13 Spotlight for PC and a Nintendo Switch. The creation of this game in particular was a self-imposed challenge by Dennis, who did it to try and make a commercially viable video game in 30 days to sell, but had to can that stipulation because it actually took way over a year to complete. At the time, it was called Eversleep, and it took on two different forms while in development. The first version of Lunastance was a 2D platformer, while the second concept was a 3D rail shooter until the final iteration was a 3D platformer that mimic the fifth generation of consoles. Let's see what Lunasense has to offer in the mascot platforming game. There isn't much of a story to be told to the player at the beginning of the game. When you take control of Hana the Tanuki, she wakes up in some strange place while someone says that in the year of 2453, after dozens of simulations, they haven't gotten any good results from them. They will continue to tweak the process, but without the professor, they can't do much because she knows the situation more than anyone. Hana is the scout that they will use to see if this time the sample loop will yield positive results, and that it is, for the most part, the story as... This is a callback to 90s platformers when you got some story as to why a character is doing what they're doing and an ending when you beat the game. To get the true ending, you need to collect all the letters in a stage that reveal a secret path beyond the goal to get a journal note that pieces together what exactly is going on. That the world was ending in the year 2253 by the Moonfall event, that no one actually made a solution to the problem, just a stopgap from the hacks at Neoflex, and now time has run out when the world only has a year left before destruction. Hana was chosen as one of two primary test sets subjects for Project for Lunacence to stop Moonfall with a little less than a year left on the clock, as some of the notes are written from her to her family about what's happening. They stop Moonfall, but at the cost of people stuck in a REM-like sleep state that just loops them back to just before waking up, and after collecting the final note, the final area will unlock, and after defeating the program, will result in Hannah finally waking up, and the credits will roll. The gameplay is fun as it was made with speedruns in mind where you have speed-based platforming. Hannah can spin to attack enemies, double jump, or triple jump into a spin for more distance like in Crash Bandicoot or Super Mario 64. The fun stuff comes with the speed as Hannah does have a run button and can run at any time to go faster but at the cost of traction because her momentum will carry her forward, causing inexperienced players to either overshoot a jump or see Hannah fall off because she didn't slow down in time. You can combine this with her jumping to solve many platforming puzzles that seem like you won't be able to make it just by jogging. The game will test her reflexes when they add speed pads and ground to the formula to see if you can master platforming at higher speeds. Lucky for people who need a bit more time to practice, as there's no game over or lives counter, but the game will still keep track of how many times you died in the act and will affect your overall grade for level mastery. The game is really fun and addicting once you get the hang of the level flow. This shows that the fifth generation of platformer games can still be fun even if they still have limited polygons. This game is really fun if you like fast-paced platformer fun that tries to capture that classic PS1 Saturn era of gaming. You can finish it in under two hours if you aren't horrible at platformers. It's also pretty cheap as well. It's on Steam, GOG, and Switch. I bought it on Steam at the time of this review for about $5, and a Grumpy Fox has stated that they are working on a sequel that mimics the Dreamcast era of gaming. So if you want a fun, fast platforming adventure, then look no further than Lunacence. Oh, and there are a few extra characters waiting for you to play as with unique abilities abilities but don't have any story relevance so you don't have to play the game again and again to unlock them. You can just play as Hana for that story experience. Now I don't like giving scores out to video games but I have to give it something. So it gets an 8 out of 10 for being a fun cute short ride that doesn't overstay its welcome but leaves you wanting more. That should do it for this review. I hope you guys are having a great holiday season and I'll see you in the next video.